Hi everyone, this is Mavic Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to go through the concept on buffer solutions. Now the definition of a buffer solution goes something like this. It is a solution that maintains pH when small amounts of H plus or OH minus are added to it. So this definition actually, it is a little bit interesting because it doesn't really tell me what is inside this buffer. It just tells me what this buffer does. So it is a good idea for us to make use of the definition to link it to another way of looking at buffers. Now, if I see that a buffer is a solution that maintains pH when a small amount of H plus is added to it, what this means is inside this buffer, I must have a base that can remove the H plus. So I know that if this is a buffer solution, inside this buffer solution, there must be a base present and the purpose or the function of this base is to remove the H plus. So therefore it can maintain pH when H plus is added. Now similarly, if this buffer solution can maintain pH when small amounts of OH minus is added to it. So what this means is inside this buffer solution, there must be an acid present and the function or the purpose of this acid is to remove OH minus. So I have an acid inside this buffer. The job for this guy is to remove OH minus. So now we know why a buffer can maintain pH because if you add H plus, there's a base inside this buffer that will remove the H plus. And when you add OH minus, then there is an acid that will remove OH minus. Now the next thing is, if I have an acid and I have a base inside the same solution, wouldn't they try to kill each other? They should try to react away each other, right? So it's because for a buffer solution, it is a special mixture of acid and base. Now this mixture of acid and base is called a conjugate acid base pair. So let me write this down here. Essentially, I would think that this is a better definition for us to remember what buffer is. A buffer, it is a mixture of an acid and a base, but more importantly, it is a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair. So, what this would mean is the two components inside this buffer solution, they are related to each other. And the only difference between this acid and base will be a H plus. So we have two examples involving an acidic buffer and an alkaline buffer. Acidic buffer, for example, will be ethanoic acid CH3COOH and sodium ethanoic CH3COO minus Na plus. So you notice an acidic buffer, there is a component of acid, there's also a component of a base. The acid in this case, obviously, will be the ethanoic acid and the conjugate base in this case will be a CH3COO minus. So you notice the conjugate acid base pair is here. This is the acid and this is the base. Then we have another example involving alkaline buffer, which is ammonia NH3 and ammonium chloride NH4 plus Cl minus. Again, this buffer, there's also a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair. The acid in this case will be NH4 plus and the base in this case will be ammonia. So again, we have this mixture of a conjugate acid base pair, so it can function as a buffer solution. Now let's look at both buffers in detail. An acidic buffer is defined as a mixture involving a weak acid and a sort of conjugate base. But my preference is we don't focus so much on the word salt. The conjugate base is more important because as mentioned previously, a buffer is a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair. So we just need to keep in mind who is the acid and who is the conjugate base. So we know that CH3COH is the acid. So I can write this here. The acid will be CH3COOH. The purpose of the acid is to remove OH minus. So this CH3COH will remove OH minus. While the CH3CO minus is the base. CH3COO minus is base. The job of this guy is to remove H plus. So this guy's job is to remove H plus. So you notice if I can interpret a buffer solution in this way, a buffer is just a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair. And if you're given this mixture, who is the acid? CH3COH. And who is the base? CH3COO minus. If you add H plus, it will be the job of the base to remove H plus. So if I'm adding H plus, the H plus will be removed by the base. In this case, it will be CH3CO minus. So therefore I can write out an acid base reaction to show the removal of the H plus. So it will look something like this, CH3COO minus and H plus. Now I want to write this as a full arrow. So this is important. 
because I need to explain that all the H plus added are totally removed so that the pH is maintained. I cannot write this as a reversible sign. So this has to be a full arrow to give me CH3COOH. So H plus is removed, pH is maintained. Similarly, if I add OH minus, adding OH minus, the acid will settle the OH minus. So it will be the drop of CH3COOH, which is the acid in this case. It removes OH minus. I can write out a neutralization reaction between the acid and OH minus. Again, full arrow because all the OH minus are removed to give me back the conjugate base and water. So I can show that the OH minus is removed and therefore pH is also maintained. Now for alkaline buffer, it is a mixture of a weak base and a salt of the conjugate acid. Again, we don't focus so much on the word salt, we just focus on conjugate acid. So same idea as that of an acidic buffer, who is the acid and who is the base? Because regardless of whether it is an acidic buffer, or alkaline buffer, the components inside this buffer is the same. You have a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair. So you give me an acidic buffer or you give me an alkaline buffer, I just need to focus on who is the acid and who is the base. So in this case, if I'm looking at the acid, the acid must be the one that contains the H+, which will be NH4+. So the acid will be NH4+, ammonium. So what's the job of this acid? Obviously, the job of this guy is to kill any OH- that is added to this buffer solution. Then the base will of course have to be ammonia, NH3, correct? And the job of this guy is to remove any H pluses that is added to the solution. The job of the ammonia is to remove H plus. So if I compare this with an acidic buffer, you notice they are a lot more similar than they are different. I always will have an acid and a base. Acid will always remove OH minus, the base will always remove H plus. So if you give me an acidic buffer or alkaline buffer, I just need to break down who is the acid and who is the base. And then I know exactly how the buffer will function when I add H+, how the buffer will function when I add OH-. So very simple, if I add H+, who is the person who is supposed to remove the H+, it is the job of the base. So ammonia will remove H+, I just write out a neutralization between ammonia and H+, full arrow to remove all the H+, so pH is maintained you get NH4 plus. H plus remove, pH is maintained. I add OH minus. It is the job of the acid to kill the OH minus. So NH4 plus will react with OH minus. Again, I can write out this equation, NH4 plus and OH minus to give me NH3 and water. So I remove all the OH minus. So again, this has to be a full arrow and therefore pH is maintained. All right, so that was the discussion involving a buffer solution. Now, in my opinion, it is more important for us to remember a buffer solution is a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair than the original definition of the buffer, which focuses on the function of the buffer. That means a solution which maintains pH when small amounts of H plus and OH minus is added to it. The definition, of course, is not wrong. It's just that it tells me more about how the buffer works, but it doesn't tell me what is inside this buffer. So remembering that a buffer is a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair it will be useful for buffer solutions and it will also be helpful for some components in ionic equilibrium. So if you learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.